Hey folks, Colin here from Something's Recording, and today I want to show you one tip for getting massive depth on vocals. Today we're going to be exploring how to get massive, massive depth on your lead vocal tracks, but before we dive in, if you're ready to take your vocal mixes to the next level, next level, excuse me, and really start dialing in your EQ process when it comes to mixing vocals, then I have just the thing for you. It is my ultimate guide to vocal EQ, and it's just a simple PDF that will walk you through how to EQ your vocals step by step to help you get polished and professional sounding vocal mixes without any more of the guesswork. It is a completely free guide, and you can download it below using the link in the video description. Now let's jump in here and take a look at this vocal. Let me play you this track. This is a finished mix here, and we're gonna increase the depth we're getting from our vocal reverb here. There's already a reverb on the vocal, so I'm gonna hit play, you can hear our finished mix, and then I'll solo up the vocal so you can hear what our vocal currently sounds like, and you can hear the, the current reverb on our vocal. So here's our finished mix for this song. So you can hear it's a good sounding track, a good sounding vocal. We have some, some reverb, we have some depth on it, but I want it to be as massive as the track is. You can see there's a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of just guitars and keyboards going on, piano, organ, there's a vibraphone, there's a piano loop, there's rhythm guitars, delay guitars, acoustic guitars, a lead guitar, so it's a big, big track, and then there's a big stack of background vocals as well. So I want the lead vocal to have that same big depth that our track has here. And just a, a plate reverb isn't really doing it for me at the moment. So I'm gonna turn this off, and I'm gonna create another bus channel here. And we'll call it, we'll call it Big Verb, because it's gonna be a big reverb, right? <laughs> uh, we'll send it into our mix bus here, and we'll solo save it. If you don't know how to solo save in Studio One, you just shift, and then click, and that'll solo up our track here. And all that means is whatever you have sending to it, when you solo it, it'll also solo up that reverb return. That way you don't have to solo this and then solo the reverb return as well. So what we'll start with is we're gonna start with uh, one reverb, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add another reverb on top of it. So let's start here with um, maybe the recital hall. We'll start with the recital hall and see what we can get off of this, just the recital hall plugin. And I'm actually gonna throw uh, my same uh, safety EQ after the reverb here. All this does is roll off everything below 200 hertz so our reverb doesn't get too muddy or too heavy sounding. So here's just the recital hall reverb. So not bad sounding. Let's tuck that in our mix and see where that sounds. See what that sounds like in our vocal. Someday. 
So that's not bad sounding. Uh, it seems like it gives us a little bit more than the play reverb using just a hall reverb. But now what we're going to do is we're going to add another reverb after this one. So we've got that recital hall reverb going. What we're going to reach for after it, let's see maybe about the concert hall verb here. So let's listen to this one just by itself. So this is just, just the concert hall reverb. So that's a big, big hall sound. You can see it's on large hall here, as in the recital hall is on medium hall. So let's take a listen now to what both of them sound like put together here. So here's the, the recital hall running into the concert hall here. Added some of that bottom end back in there now uh, with both reverbs going. Messed with the mid-range a little bit, but I think I'm gonna leave it in. Uh, it gives it that more ethereal sort of sound here. So now let's, let's mix these two reverbs together inside of our vocal mix here, okay? So this is back inside the track, both reverbs going at the same time. <laughs> That's sounding pretty good. Hear all that extra depth and that extra length we're getting out of our reverb sound now? Pretty cool, pretty cool. Last thing we're gonna do here, because of course we can't just leave it like that. We gotta, we gotta mess with it a little bit more. So I'm gonna throw the binaural pan plugin on here and let's widen our reverb sound a little bit. Just widening it by about 20% there. So we're going from 100 up to 120%. Let's mix this back in. So I'm gonna bump it back up to zero so we can hear it at full volume inside the track here. And then we'll tuck it back and mix it in with the vocal here. So here's both reverbs going as well as a widening plugin on the end. So if you're looking for some extra depth on your lead vocal, instead of just pushing one reverb a little bit further, lengthening it or adding pre-delay or whatever, try stacking another reverb on top of it. And I don't mean on another bus, I mean feeding in to another reverb. And if you wanna go that extra mile, put a widener on the end as well. It's all we're doing here, two reverbs on the same track, and then a little bit of width on the end to get massive depth 
out of our lead vocal track. I hope that was helpful for you. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, if you're ready to take your vocal mixes to the next level and really start dialing in your EQ strategy, then I have just the tool for you and it is completely free. It is my ultimate guide to vocal EQ and you can download it below to start creating more professional vocal mixes in less time. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.